We are so glad you could join us today. We're so happy for New Hope Television to make this possible. Elson, we want to thank you for this opportunity to share this time. We're glad, extremely glad to have Dr. Naveen Thomas with us. He's a surgeon who specialized in, in pediatric surgery. He's a senior advisor to the Bangalore Baptist Hospital here in Bangalore. Such a joy to have Dr. with us. You have the privilege of not only knowing him for many years, but we also worship in the same church. And he preaches sometimes, and I preach, and he preaches much better than me. And also another thing is that his Canada is much better than mine. I mean, I'm simply shocked and amazed to the way he does messages in Canada. Praise God for you, doctor. Thank you, uh, Pastor Vasu. But I must tell you that uh, my daughter is a big fan of yours. Thank you. And, uh, and and I, I can't overtake you in that sense. <laughs> and again, it's a privilege to connect Thank and discuss you. on New Hope TV. Thank you, so, Doctor. Thank you so much. You had a busy day today. I'm so glad you could join. We act busy, Pastor. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I always tell my, you know, when somebody asks me, are you busy? No, I say I'm always busy. Otherwise, they say I'm lazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. So, it is an art. It is an art. It is an art. It's wonderful. <laughs> to look busy. Yes. Yes, Doctor. I'm so glad that you read the book, uh, Bible Emotion and Health, which I was able to write. It's I'm right so grateful. here. That's great. Thank you. And I'm so thankful for the New Hope TV for publishing that. So I'm so glad you read. But, Doctor, could you tell us a few words what you thought of the book? And Yeah, I, I think I must start with the caption. It says, Bible plus medicine equals wholeness. Uh, you know, it is not Bible equals wholeness. It is not medicine equals wholeness. When it comes to health, physical health, Bible plus medicine. I think that was beautiful. Thank you. And uh, tell us what you understand or uh, your definition of health, well-being or wholeness. We were talking earlier about how you could have sickness but you can still have wholeness. Yes. Go ahead and explain that. Yes. You know, I think many of us would have heard uh, about the WHO definition of health. It is not the absence of disease or infirmity, but it is the complete well-being of the physical, mental, social and spiritual aspects of a person. That's, I think that's a very good definition but ultimately it is you know the wholeness and healing it is much more than just curing of diseases and uh, absence of some of those things absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I think it's 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 beautiful to oh, yes. know that in its totality yeah and sometimes doctor even believers are not healed complete sometimes they have cancer, or they have some kind of sickness. And what I have seen is that even though some people have sickness, you know, but they still have joy, they still have a purpose in life, they still move on in life, they still grow in the Lord and then blessing people. Of course, they may be on medication, but there is a sort of a wholeness in their lives which has joy, peace. Of course, sometimes they may get discouraged. But still, they have a positive attitude and continue to grow in the Lord. Absolutely. I think you have uh, just hit upon something which is very, very important. Uh, I would like to give two examples, sure. life examples. I remember this dear, dear senior person, a lady uh, doctor who went through this illness with pancreatic cancer. But anytime I tried to talk to her and, you know, to console her. In fact, I would be blessed and, uh, and she would say, Naveen, uh, I can't tell you how good the Lord has been Praise to me. God. And that would be her constant refrain. Amen. I can also remember another person uh, who was paralyzed, who would always lie in this particular hospital near the window, near the door, and as people walk in to the ward or out, anybody visited, they would love to stop by her bedside, just listen to her 
and just see her cheerful face. Amen. So I would call that, you know, they were whole people, healed people, really, though they had uh, physical infirmities. Absolutely. That, that is beautiful. So because as we, as we live in this broken world, God has never promised us perfect health. God has never promised us, you know, some people would like to believe that if you are saved, if you come to know the Lord, you will never fall sick. You know, I met an interesting person. Not only he said, I won't fall sick, he said, I won't even die. <laughs> the problem with that is I can't prove him wrong because he'll be dead. I can't say <laughs> you said you'd die, man. And yet I think, you know, one of the greatest things, uh, yesterday I was listening to Rick Warren and he said a very interesting thing. Bible does not promise anybody life without pain. Right. I think that is very, very true. Lazarus had sickness. He died. He was raised again. But, Pastor, he died again. That's right. That's right. He's not with us right That's now. That's right. That is right. Uh, so, I also remember one pastor who came to me and said, after a certain diagnosis, he said, how is it possible for me to go back to my church, my parish, and say, I have this sickness because I have preached that with faith, you will have none of these diseases. diseases. So, you know, we had to have a long a bit of discussion. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, I feel comfortable now to go back and say. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I mean, Paul himself had a thorn in the flesh. Yes. Timothy was not well. And and throughout the Bible, and it's been, one of the things I, I was really encouraged, Elijah and Elisha, you remember that story is beautiful. Yes. Elijah was the senior man. Elisha was the junior. So Elisha says, I want double portion. You know. So he said, you ask a hard thing. But if you see me, you'll get it. And if you see doctor, Elisha actually performed twice the amount of miracle Elijah did. But it's very fascinating how Elisha died. He simply says, Elisha became sick. The sickness to which he was going to die. Here is this man with double portion of Elijah's thing and he becomes sick and bedridden and he dies. Yes. And so it's very, very encouraging that sometimes we would think, you know, why did I get sickness? Why can't God heal me completely? Welcome to the club. Yes, absolutely. Jesus himself yes. went through so much of suffering and pain and death. And uh, he's the one who said in uh, John 16 and verse 33, Yes. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have tribulation. Yes. I wish uh, he had said, in this world, you may have tribulation. <laughs> I, I, I would have loved to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, you will have tribulation or trouble, but I have overcome the world. It is like saying, uh, the results are already declared, but the exams are still going on. <laughs> true, 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 true. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So, as we start this, we we would, as uh, medicine, surgery, hospitals, or something that God has brought into us, so that whenever it is available, we need to use that. You know, You know, sometimes we would think that, you know, that God will heal all diseases without any medication. And I remember sometime one, you know, in one particular place, they said, no, God will heal, we don't need medication. And uh, one person came with glasses into that. And he said, hey, I thought you God is supposed to heal everything. You know, God is not an eye specialist or what? <laughs> <laughs> because if you take that to the logical conclusion, then... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my glasses today. <laughs> but you did that lot. But what I think is that medicines are available. God has given that. And using that is not lack of faith. It yeah. is ultimately God who heals through the medication. Yes. Because we trust in Him for all our healing. Absolutely. Philip was transported to the place where the eunuch was traveling. Absolutely. But you know, it was the Lord's will to transport him. Today we use cars and vans and buses and trains. 
God can still transport us. Absolutely. But he may also have given us these gadgets that we must receive with gratitude Absolutely. and use it. Yes, thank you, Doctor. You know, one of the things that I have always been fascinated is that, you know, when I wrote this book also, I was thinking, how many times the Bible tells us about emotions and health as a connection, you know? And uh, I, I like that what particular words that when in Proverbs we read this, a merry heart is like a medicine. In the Good News Bible, it says, to be gloomy all the time is slow death. <laughs> I love that. So what's your, your understanding of that? Yeah, it is, um, uh, you know, I'm reminded of uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, King James Version, it says, be careful for nothing. Not very good. But in everything with prayer and thanksgiving, Thank you. let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding and misunderstanding, <laughs> <laughs> shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, uh, you know, be careful for nothing may, be, may not be the best English of today's English. It is be anxious for nothing. Mm. That is what the NIV says, okay. the nearly inspired version. <laughs> that is yeah, um, but then, so it is a choice that we make. Mm. If it was not possible, it wouldn't be there as an instruction. Absolutely, absolutely. So it is an instruction to me and to all of us, be anxious for nothing. But instead, take this to the absolutely. Lord. Prayers. And with a little thanksgiving, the topping, mm. It changes the whole thing and it changes our mood. Absolutely. Yes, we, it does not mean that we don't go through the downs. Yes. We will. Absolutely. And, uh, but it's a choice that we make, uh, you know, just like the early disciples, mm -hmm. just like uh, Paul and Silas, they were joyful. Amen. It was a choice that they made even Absolutely. in prison. So, we, we have a choice to make um, yeah. today. Absolutely. Every time we're going to make a choice. You know, I just reminded uh, about um, yeah, 13 years ago, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And we just had the cancer surgery for my wife. We brought her back home. And, you know, some well-meaning friends would come and visit my wife, thinking they were going to, you know, encourage her, whatever. And they, oh, I heard that you had cancer. Oh, my uncle also had the same cancer. Last week only he died. <laughs> and uh, instead of trying to encourage, they discourage. Now, when the, a lot of these people would come. and Well-meaning. Well-meaning. And they would come and say something like this. She'll be so discouraged. I'll have to counsel her after that. <laughs> so much so, finally, we had to be very careful, you know, who we send. So when we see another mistake, I think, doctor, that happens is when somebody is sick, bedridden, Oh, there is some sin within you. Or the other thing they would say is, you don't have faith. If you had faith, you would be healed. You know, and, and this person, as we were talking, you know, they is already sick and already discouraged. And well-meaning Christians would use words like, you have no faith, you uh, have some hidden sin within you. And, and uh, something is wrong with you. That's why you are sick. And they would discourage. So please tell us yes. about that. I think, uh, Pastor, you must uh, thank your wife. Mrs. Narola has written a beautiful uh, chapter in this, this book. So it's very meaningful because it, it comes from that perspective of someone who has gone through that patch. So it's an encouragement to many. So thank you for that. And uh, uh, you know, the fact that uh, people go through pain is because we live in a broken world. Absolutely. Um, I love the prayer of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, their confession before the king, uh, before they were thrown into the blazing furnace. They said, our God is able to rescue us. 
even if he does not, we will still not bow down here. We will continue to worship uh, God. Amen. So, uh, you know, whether to cure in that sense, it is left to him. But one thing we are sure about, he is able. And therefore we take this request. And Jesus' own prayer was, Thy will be done. If it is thy will, take this cup away Amen. from me. Amen. And that is faith. That is faith. Absolutely. In other words, what you're saying is that it's perfectly all right to pray for healing. Because that is the right thing to do. We want to affirm that God still does miracles. Yes. And does amazing miracles of healing. Yes. Hmm. But I always say this, doctor. You know, here is one person. Let's call him just John for convenience. He has a sickness and God heals him. And it's a testimony. I mean, there's no doubt. Here is another man, James maybe. He prays and he is not healed, but he still loves and worships and still enjoys God in spite of the fact that God did not answer his prayer. In my heart, I'll go for this man. <laughs> because, and, and simple reason is this, that God is not a Santa Claus. You know? Absolutely. And so we have to affirm both. We have to affirm both. Yes. That God can do a miracle and heal you without medication. He can heal you through medication. And sometimes through medication, and so sometimes we may not be healed, but you still have faith and confidence as you were saying. If God, God is able to save us from your hands, Adhu. but even if he doesn't save us, we will still not bow down and will still worship God. And yes. that is faith in a tremendous higher level, I believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I think uh, I'm also reminded of uh, when you were talking about uh, people coming to visit, people who are ill. You know, when Job was ill, the friends came and they did such a wonderful thing for the first one week. Like, because they kept their mouths <laughs> closed. Uh, they, they just were present. They just were okay. affirming their friendship and partnership just by being there. Sometimes we feel we have to talk a lot. We have to give an answer as to why this has to happen or not. And then they messed it up so badly that God had to rebuke them. So... We don't understand it fully. Let's agree. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, as a pediatric surgeon, I see cancers in oh, children. children. And uh, uh, what do you tell the parents? What is the reason why this happened? We don't have an answer. We live in a broken world. We don't have answers to everything. But then we commit it to God and move on. And Absolutely. And, Absolutely. you know, so it's a, again comes back to the choice, how we respond to infirmities, difficulties, diseases. I always say this, doctor, a sign of mature person is not necessarily one who has all the answers for all the questions. A mature person is one who doesn't have answers for many painful questions, but he still loves the Lord and believes in him. Because we don't have all the answers. Absolutely. Yes. And to come to that point of saying, Lord, it's your choice. But then we receive anything that is given to us with gratitude. Yes. And medicine is one such gift mm -hmm. that God has enabled people to, uh, you know, we thank God for that. Mm, absolutely. For those discoveries. Not invention. They are all discoveries of That's the... Right. That's right. <laughs> and I always, say, I always say this. The greatest physician, psychologist, psychiatrist is our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And the scripture is an amazing, amazing book that gives us so much of teaching. So much of teaching. You know, I like the one that, you know, in Proverbs, I think it is. It's a very beautiful verse that in the fourth chapter, it says this, you know says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 
for they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. Health actually. So in the message Bible it says, Dear friends, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate, learn it by heart. Those who discover these words live, really live, body, soul, they are bursting with health. Amen. How do you like that? <laughs> so what happens when you obey God? Because he's going to tell you to love. He's going to tell you to forgive. He's going to tell you to be joyful, patient, kind. What happens to the body on the inside when you follow the instruction of God? It says, when you incline, if when you listen to the voice of God, it will be healing to your body. Explain that from a medical, as a doctor, what do you understand? Yeah, I think it's a very good question, Pastor, because, um, you know, we know that there are a lot of um, hormones in the body. And, uh, you know, the so-called happy hormones are the, you know, serotonin, dopamine, um, oxytocin, endorphins. And when we are uh, in fellowship, in friendship, uh, even um, when we are happy in one sense, joyful, choosing to be joyful, you know, these, these hormones and chemicals do play a role a role it's not everything but then we know that these are realities in the chemical sense in the medical Amen. sense Amen. so uh, so it really matters when we have a bitterness mm. when we have anger you know it is okay we we go through these um, you know difficulties uh, somebody was giving the example of uh, being like porcupines when we uh, are in fellowship, we, you know, the quills, the sharp pens are felt, but then to decide to accept, move on, uh, not to harp, not to stay on the unpleasant things, you know, just to move on is a choice that we make. That has a healing property. That may not be everything, but then that is a choice that we make, which is good right. for us. Yeah. I'm so happy you mentioned the uh, chemical oxytocin. And uh, it's a love that when I experience God's love, and when I live in harmony and love with my wife and my family, this chemical oxytocin is produced, right, doctor? And with no side effects. <laughs> All medication in some, in some level or the other has side effects. But when you love God and when you, these chemicals are produced in your body, <laughs> it's free one yes. thing. <laughs> and, and it's free and it's also very beneficial to the body and for your general health, isn't it? Doctor? Absolutely. So, you know, this along with, you know, God has given us common sense and uh, we better adhere to uh, healthy lifestyle, and, you know, healthy eating and some exercise in the right proportion Correct. and, uh, you know, put it all together. It contributes towards good health, though it is not a guarantee of good health. No. We accept whatever is given to us, but with gratitude of heart, we move on. And uh, I see this all the time, people who have this kind of attitude joyful attitude which is a choice that they make absolutely and also people who are bitter you know because of the experiences that they have gone through who could do much better mm. yeah since you mentioned about bitterness doctor just tell us in short because the lord told us to forgive and uh, i always say this god told us to love and forgive people because he was not only interested in your spiritual well-being, because when you don't forgive others, you are not forgiven, right? But also That's he right. was concerned about our emotional, physical, psychological well-being. Yes. Because when I forgive people, I actually prevent so many sicknesses from my body. 
I'm not saying Absolutely. that is the only way you get sickness. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that when you forgive and bless people, you are actually ask. You are in a very good position. I'm not saying you won't get sick, but I'm saying you're in a very good position health-wise. Absolutely, absolutely. And to receive that from God, trust and obey, and move on, forgive, not holding bitterness. And, uh, you know, in friendship, fellowship, what a beautiful example which is given, which make, paves the way for good living. Absolutely. <laughs> and I always say this, that you and I as believers, when we love God and obey the scripture, what an advantage we have. Amen. Along with medication. Yes. Yes. And Otherwise, that's... we will go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes that aside, is this is very true. Absolutely. So just love God. And when you obey and love Him and obey Him, you are in a better position to have good health. Thank you, Sir Doctor. Thank you very much.